Hi, I'm Edgar, and today I'll start doing my videos in a slightly different style. And the first model that gets to use this style is the American M3 Halftrack from Warlord Games. As editing videos takes a long time, I still want to make them. I've decided that some of my larger models, uh, I'll do them as pairs of videos. The first, like this one, I'll build and modify the model, and the second, I will paint them. I got the M3 second hand, and so I checked over the sprues and instructions to make sure I have everything. The first sprue has the wheels, tracks, body panels, and the second has a lot of the structure and the smaller parts. And I'll leave the instructions visible on screen for you to pause in case you need them at home. The first steps of the build are to put the seat backs onto the middle section which has the seats. Unfortunately there's no keying and the images don't actually show the exact position clearly. There's also side armour panels which go on the side, and while they do have a single tiny keying peg, this is almost more confusing than nothing because there's nothing for it to line up with. Being stuck on the first hurdle was a little disappointing, but I felt that if I could have the other parts of the model built, I could imply from those where these first parts would go, so I skipped ahead to the chassis. And to do that I needed the track sections which are moulded as one part and do have pegs to align them correctly, including a small and large peg so they only fit on the correct sides. Looking at the track surfaces, the mould line is pretty pronounced and cleaning each individual link was somewhat tedious. Looking at a picture of some of the M3s on Google, most of the tracks are covered, so cleaning this wasn't all that important. Although I did find out later on that the road wheels are quite visible. Next up for the front axle, front suspension and wheels. If you look ever so closely, you can see that the axle piece has some tiny round indents for the pegs of the suspension. And these are ye old leaf spring suspension, which is pretty interesting. They do require being put on the axle the correct way, and to make sure you do, it might be easier to stick the springs to the body first and then the axle on, rather than the other way around, which is what I have done. But I did manage to do it correctly and put it in place, and then I used some thin liquid cement to seep into the pegs, as it's easier doing it that way than putting the cement on and trying to line everything up again. The wheels are next, and these are loose, really loose. You can probably model them turning, that's how loose they are. Or, if you make a mistake, you can have them droop quite badly. And so what I did is I left mine on the table for a few minutes to ensure that they stayed aligned whilst the poly cement set. For the rear armour panel, the seat section needs to be stuck in place first, and it does sit well in the kind of lower chassis piece. The rear of these parts form a shape with the corresponding keying on that rear armour panel, and so I was pretty confident that these parts were lined up correctly, and now I had just enough information to line up the side armour panels and seats where they were supposed to go. The seat section lines up all the way to the edge of that middle piece, and the armour sits kind of over the edge, and that's why I was confused earlier. Another piece with some passable keying is the dashboard and front of the cab piece thing. And then the front sides can go in place. I wanted to get these front sides on when the main sides were still drying so that I could judge them just right and get the best alignment. But these also have nothing really to line up with except for the inner side of the wheel arches, which do fit the shape very well, but still slide side to side. So I got the bonnet section, um, hood as it's a Yankee truck, to make sure they all align correctly here as well. I did notice this little piece of flashing on the windows, but that cleaned up quite nicely. With the bonnet stuck down as well, I gently held all of the pieces of the front together to make sure they set correctly. And to its credit, the model does all line up nice and square. The front of the vehicle also needs a radiator armour piece, and you get your choice of front assembly. As the cable drum has some pretty terrible flashing on a spring, no less, I felt it was best to go with the winch. At some point I realised I hadn't put the driver together, which was supposed to happen right at the beginning, uh, but I was preoccupied with how the armour panels go, I must have forgotten. 
The figure is a little closer to true scale than Warlord Games' hero scale infantry, but they're close enough that I think you could kit match between them. Certainly swapping a hand or a head to make it more interesting. I did try to use a whole arm, but the angle didn't quite fit into the cab, and of course the figure won't fit on the correct side of the vehicle as it's an American truck, so I put them on the wrong side where they do fit. I ended up going back to the intended arms and put the steering wheel on, putting them back into the vehicle whilst the cement sets so that nothing ends up totally out of alignment. There's a machine gun cupola to fit, or kind of machine gun ring. The support strut goes onto a square recess and that can sit in the gaping hole on the floor. Uh, there are some pegs on the top of the armour to line it up with, but it's not a perfect fit. I'm not going to glue this thing down just yet as I want to be able to access the inside with a paintbrush. In the meantime, the heavy machine gun. The famous M2 Browning. As the barrel is very thin, I tried to cut the sprue away so that the barrel wouldn't bend. It did anyway, so that was a failed attempt. The ammo can just goes into the peg on the side and the tiny spade grips get glued on the back. Odd that they're called spade grips as that's not how you hold a spade. The final points of the intended assembly are small things. Mine racks go on both sides of the armour, there's a towing hook, there's a step or toolbox thing maybe on the side and then a jerry can just above that and another on the other side. And also two headlights which are very small but do sit in place once you get them there. The guards for the headlights, which seems to be a thing I keep talking about with World War II vehicles, are quite small and fiddly. There's a tiny tiny peg on the headlight and a tiny recess on the guard so you have to separate the part from the sprue clean up the mold line on such a tiny part and then stick that in place with only that small connection point i did just about get those on there's also an armored windshield thing although this went in nicely i did pop the machine gun ring back on to ensure that it would all line up with that as well it is a tight fit but it does just about fit I had a quick look through the stowage and decided to just put the helmets on the side and one of the two tarp rolls. But that is the model built as intended. If you notice the sign on the video, there's still some more model making to go before I hand off to next week for the painting. I want to do a little customization. And partly that's because there's only one crew figure, the driver. But that's okay because I've got all of the spare parts from the US infantry that I got a little while ago. And I got the army shirt piece on desktop hero which is a good site for posing models well i say it's good but it's become painfully slow in the last few years i'm not sure why but it's just about the only online tool to pose models in this way and certainly the only one that lets you download all poses instantly without having to buy the whole model again but at length i did get a few seated poses and i ran those off of my printer I did mention that the driver figure was just about the right scale to use those old US infantry arms, so if I print out the bodies at that same size, then they'll be able to use those same arms and look right with the driver. Naturally, the 3D prints have some ugly pock marks where the supports join, but I positioned them so that they would not be visible in the final model. This one with the crossed leg had a little too much uh, waiting for the bus in the rain energy, so I went with the uncrossed leg versions instead. But first, I glued up a gunner for the heavy machine gun. This was a little fiddly because I didn't want to glue any of the bits down, and by a little bit fiddly I mean I wish I had glued it all down, but I really want to paint them separately so I persisted and got it done. The space in the MG ring is quite tight and the gun takes up half of it, more than half of it. I'm not sure how you're supposed to position a model to hold the gun as if they're shooting it. But instead of that, I was pretty much forced to do something different, so I went with a pointing hand, which would be positioned pointing over the barrel, as the gun would be pointed to the side. The other hand I tried to position as if they were holding the grip, in kind of a nearly ready to shoot position, but it seems to nicely fit on the top of the receiver instead, which looks also quite appropriate. Next for a couple of passengers, still not gluing these in because I want to paint separately, but trying to find some interesting positions for them. When I built the infantry for my US, I used up all of the M1 Garands and M1 Carbines because there weren't many of them, and they have a special rule in bolt action, but the M17 bolt action rifle doesn't. And that means I can have the passengers armed with these bolt action rifles without using up the limited M1s. 
Once I was done with that, I pulled out some different arms for a second one. Like the first, I'm not using the intended pair of arms, which would hold the rifle in a good pose for running or standing models, but rather I'm mixing the poses to get one that looks good seated, or, or good or at least passable. So if I assemble all the guns, the crew and the MG ring, I can show off the fully built model. Whilst I have mentioned several parts of the model will be kept separate or unglued for painting, I think that some of the parts will actually be kept separate permanently. The medium machine guns around the side are optional in bolt action, so having them removable makes sense. And the passengers can be installed to show that a unit is being transported and removed when they dismount. The problem with that is I always forget to remove marker models like that, like my dissent models for the Soviet tanks or the passengers in my British Universal Carrier. Overall the model went together fairly quickly with the parts of the model well moulded and designed, although the poor instructions and lack of keying made some of the parts a little confusing, I was patient and checked against the other parts and the whole thing does line up nicely. I'll say that I did get this discounted second hand and I wouldn't be quite so happy if I paid full price, but that's not to say that there's anything terrible about the model, just some minor gripes and I have had far worse models in the past. So what do you think about the kit, or my additional crew, or more pertinently my idea of splitting the build and painting into two separate videos? Obviously you'll have to wait until next week to see the second part of that. If you do have any comments in the comments section below is where you can put them, but for now I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.